Ah, listen to all the 3D printers whirring in the background. All right, someone sent me something. They said, you know, basically, hey, we're going to send this to you. It needs some repairs, but uh, if you can fix it, you can keep it. And I'm like, cool. And they sent me this along with some other accoutrement. Hewlett Packard. It's a 48SX scientific expandable super calculator. So this is a reverse polis notation calculator. It's used for engineering. It's very neat. Comes from about 1990. And apparently it has some columns out in the display. Now let's see. Three batteries. Triple A. Let's see. Invalid card data. What? Oh, that, oh yeah, that's right. This thing can take cards. Oh, apparently, apparently he gave me a battery as well. All right. Yeah, you can put like expansion cards into it. Oh, it has one already. Oh, I probably shouldn't have pulled that out with the system on. <laughs> oh yeah, 128k SRAM. Oh, the battery goes into the SRAM. Oh. <laughs> We are terminators. A CPU is set to read only when we go out on emission mode. Read and write, read only. It's <laughs> probably a bunch of surface mount chips in here, I guess. So yeah, you can actually put two expansion cards in this thing. Well, sure enough, there's a couple columns out. Yeah, this, this is interesting. It has like the menu system that you didn't really see on the TIs until, uh, I don't know, 2005, I want to say. So let's see, I, I believe it's reverse Polish notation. So 10, where's enter? Oh, there's enter. It's kind of a weird place. 10, 10, multiply, 100. Okay, that makes sense. See how there's a orange secondary and then a blue secondary? So I think that's supposed to be blue. It just faded over the years. Wow, 2D, 3D. I think you can actually get like, you can expand this with the memory cards. Uh, yeah, so a couple columns there. Not super great condition. Well, I mean, the calculator is. But... Oh, it's going to be that adhesive glue again, I bet. How do you even get this thing open? Holy buckets, it's made in America? Usually it would have been like Taiwan or Malaysia. Oh, this thing must have been top shelf back in the day. Oh, look, it's got IR transceiver and I think it's an RS-232 port. Oh, here's the note. Hi Ben, this is my old HP 48SX and other stuff for your entertainment and mine. Since I was a RPN, Reverse Pulse Notation Zealot, I was an early adopter and probably bought mine in 1990 when they first came out. This was at least my fourth calculator by HP at the time, and I mourned when they lost the Calculator Wars to TI and their high school <laughs> marketing machine. There was an astounding hacker community around this calculator who hung out on comp.sys.hp48 and ended up doing all kinds of amazing things including discovering internal ROM routines, hacking the shell, building an assembler. Oh, most of these wonders are still available on hpcalc.org. Okay, I've included all the stuff I could find. Documentation is owner, Owner's Manual Volumes 1 and 2, Programming Referencing Manual, a handbook, Intro to Assembly. That is awesome. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. Let's see. Okay, here's the handbook. I'm guessing this probably doesn't cover disassembly. It does not. Okay. Programmer's Reference Manual. Look at all this. Oh my gosh. What kind of programming did this use? Uh, oh, look, you can send away for more. Uh, there's a, a, a distinct smell to it. I think there's a couple different ways to program this. Like, they have their own kind of, like, basic style. And then, of course, assembly. Apparently, this thing uses a 64-bit processor that divides it into 4-bit nibbles or something weird like that. I was looking it up online. Oh, oh, I know what the smell is now. This this is a kitchen a kitchen garbage bag, which would probably have Yeah, it has like some deodorizing aspects to it. Okay, that's why that smell was strangely familiar. The first thing I thought was cat litter. Oh my gosh. Holy. Okay, volume one of the owner's manual. RAM and EEPROM cards. Okay, that was that thing I pulled out. <laughs> oh, must be fun for like a BBS back in the day. Smart keys. 
Uh, yeah, so you know, you might use these if you were, or use this calculator if you're like a civil engineer and you're like, oh, I have to calculate how much cement goes into that dam or something like that. <sighs> okay, R oh, reverse RPL, RPL and assembly language programming? Oh, there's a, oh, is this another card? What is this? It's a disc. You don't get documentation like this anymore. Oh, this talks about the internals. Okay. I wonder if it tells us how to take it apart. And I'm guessing this is volume two? Yes. Standard free fall acceleration. Gram mass, US gallon, Canadian gallon. Wow. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's alphabetical. Square footage. Survey foot length. Yeah, so you could use this thing in all sorts of in industries. I bet this thing was a pretty penny back in the day. Pretty penny in 1990 dollars, which would be a lot of pretty pennies. Well, good news! I found a document on hpcalc.org that tells you how to take this apart, and apparently it's rather complicated. I guess what they used to do is they'd remove the tin. Wait, is it actually tin? I guess it is. They removed the tin uh, faceplate, but apparently there's another way to do it. Oh my gosh, there's, oh, it's held together by plastic rivets? That's awfully strange. I mean, this is like, yeah. I wonder why they did that. I guess maybe to have like a nice clean look. So there's no point in digging under here because there's no uh, plastic rivets. And of course, the documentation is from the 90s and it's all done with ASCII art, because why wouldn't it be? So apparently what it wants us to do is make some ingress slits here. I don't know why I've been using the word ingress and egress a lot lately. Oh no, I'm having exacto knife flashbacks. Eighth of an inch, AKA three millimeters. This is the least, apparently this is the least destructive way to do it. Huh, maybe, oh, HP probably didn't want you to see the secret sauce. Okay, now I'm supposed to drill a line of holes. I'm gonna use a 1.5 millimeter bit. Okay, that went into the air. Guess that's good. Air. Air. To air is human. Of course, that'd be spelled differently. Air, not my thumb. So I was uh, helping this guy make a, play, a custom pinball play field last week. He has a homebrew game based off Cuphead. Uh, and uh, he's, or well, he's retired, but uh, he was an anesthesiologist. And so um, I was talking to him and I mentioned how my luck had run out with X-Acto knife blades. And so he's like, oh, well, there's a certain nerve, blah, blah, blah. As long as you didn't cut that, you should be okay. And I'm like, oh, all right. He's like, well, do you have feeling in the tip of your thumb? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, you're good then. Yeah. He also said the scar tissue should heal eventually because right now it is a bit stiff. You can see the PCB. Oh, there's even more vibration now because there's two 3D printers running. PCB's right there. So apparently, as long as we cut away from the PCB, we should be good. Apparently there's like some plastic rivets we need to sever, just like my nerve that didn't get severed. Or, or Black Widow. I'm gonna break my nose. Ah, come on, there we go. Hey, remember that time I had to gash holes inside of a TI calculator to take it apart? Me neither. Okay, so I'm feeling inside. It feels like something. Ah. Okay, I think I just cut the rivet. That's the same blade I cut my thumb open with. Okay, apparently I should be able to slightly pry it open now. Eh, a little bit. So what was the idea? Like people would get tired of trying to reverse engineer your calculators, give up? Those are the rivets? What? Really? Yeah, the little plastic rivets. How much did this calculator cost, HP? Hmm? Seriously? Oh my gosh, what would Lewis Rossman have to say about this? Hey everybody. Today we're going to talk about right to repair. This has been going on for a long time now. Yeah, the HP calculator, back in 1990, and it was very difficult to repair. Also, New York City is dead. This seems incredibly destructive. I mean, what were they thinking? 
There, but for the grace of God, go I. Ah. Oh, man. Oh, no, I'm cutting toward myself. Ben! <laughs> you never learn! You'll never hear the wolf cry to the blue corn moon or ask the grinning bobcat why he grins. When I was working in a theater and that movie came out. We need someone that's really progressive and, and hip to play John Smith. I know, Mel Gibson. I mean, you've got this nice case and it says, made in USA. You never see that anymore. Then you have to destroy it. <laughs> this, this case is like, will I be able to play piano after this surgery? Of course. Oh good, because I couldn't before. It doesn't appear to have loosened up much. Apparently there's another one over there. Oh man, I can't use my Dremel on that. Or I could even like remove the entire thing and re 3D print a new piece. Man, why did they do it like this? I do own a plastic splooger kit. I just don't know where it is at the moment. Why is it so difficult? Oh, the circuit board's attached to the front? Why? <sighs> I can picture the scene. Steve Jobs is like, I want the iPad to be as unuser fixable as possible. And they're like, how unfixable is that? And then he slaps this thing down on the table. These are all plastic rivets. What the heck? Jiminy Christmas biscuits. There's no screws in here, nothing. I assume this was a very expensive item back in the day. And this is how it comes apart. How did they service this at HP? Maybe they didn't service it. They just threw it into a bin and then uh, sent you another one. It was snapped together. Oh my gravy. <sighs> yeah, look at all these stupid little plastic rivets everywhere. Oh my god, look at all that! Look at all, oh my... Oh, main CPU must be under here. Whoa! There it is! The CPU from the first Terminator. Oh my gosh. Hold that for a drop of blood. And this, this frame here appears like it's going around the LCD. Oh, it's tabbed in place. Oh, I hope the LCD doesn't fall out. It might. You know, at this point, I don't know. I, <laughs> oh, wow, it's all gold plated. Kind of disappointing how, uh, how difficult that was to take apart. I mean... It should have been, uh, you know, it's, how would you service this thing? I guess you'd have to, you just destroy the case every time? Oh, the LCD is gonna come up with that? Oh, of course it will. Oh, there's even tabs on the tabs? Who, ta who watches the watch tabs? Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. The LCD is connected to this metal here as well. And then that also pr compresses the LCD against, well, it's using the contact pad, so it's not, the failure is not being caused for the same reason that a TI would fail, which would be um, glue failing. It's weird how the, the, these expansion cards are angled out slightly. Look where the negative terminal of the battery was connected to. The can! Look at that! They put a bend in the can for the terminal. Yeah, I mean, this is like a really impressively engineered and also kind of... Uh, I don't want to say badly engineered, but... Baffingly... Baff... Bafflingly engineered thing. I just... I just don't... I don't even know what to say. <sighs> Will it even turn on again? Uh, that was a keyboard matrix. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jeez. 
you know this is really weird they have these um cross hash pat cross hatch patterns for the keys but you don't usually see this in a silk screen circuit usually you have two layers of silk screen and then it's separated with well, i guess they do have a few separations here uh yeah it's just very strange what connects to the on button that's another one of those dumb things. Look at that, it's like, it's just like bent and biting into the PCB right next to a bunch of critical connections right next to the CPU. So it's like, you build this on a Friday and someone's like, someone's like oh, I guess I broke it. Ah, who cares, it's Miller time. I'm union, union calculator man. This is the uh, interface material that connects um, all, these, all these pads. Also notice how there's no solder mask. So there's no solder mask and a metal case which has ground. <sighs> Look, I know I'm just like a has-been corporate YouTuber, but this seems really janky. I mean, it looks cool, but I don't know. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but this looks like this looks like gold. How can you test if something's gold? I guess I could take this to a pawn shop. <laughs> Does gold taste different than copper? I think it is gold. Wow. I mean, well, yeah, it has to be gold because um, this thing is like 30 years old and it's still shiny. I mean, it's beautifully made, but oh my, that case was terrible. Oh, wow, here you go. There's a piezo element held in place by melted tabs. So you've got this super high grade made in America high end calculator and it's assembled like things in China would be now. And like, see, yeah, see how they have that's the um, element going to the piezo. So the piezo is grounding to the main case. And I, I assume it's probably resonating into the metal a bit. You know what? I'm gonna take a break from this. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go have a beer. I'm gonna clean the contacts with some rubbing alcohol. Oh, hmm. Look what's on the back of the LCD. Hmm. It's a piece of electric tape. Lovely. I mean, if the screen dies, this thing is pretty much dead. Yeah, there's definitely some connection issues with the pressure on the screen. So if I put this clamp here. Uh, seems to fix the rows. There we go. And then we're missing some compression up here. That fixes everything but those three columns. Okay, what's causing these three on the left to fail? Squish it really tight. Squish that cat! Just squish that cat! There is a little bit of a gap here. I mean, it's on the other side as well. See that? Kind of comes up a little bit. I wonder. You're talking about how back in the eight, uh, not the eighties, the nineties, like angels were a big thing. <sighs> I think George Carlin had a stand-up bit about that too. It's like, what's with angels everywhere? Why isn't it some other mythical creature like goblins? And so then we started thinking, oh, what if all these classic songs? All this, we're basically thinking of any song that talked about angels. What if it was talking about goblins instead? And it's pretty funny. It's like, my blood runs cold. The goblin is a centerfold. Or, goblin of Harlem. You're my goblin. Come and save me tonight. City of, what was it? City of Angels. That was a movie, right? That was one with What's-Her-Face. Uh, Meg Ryan and Nicolas Cage. It wasn't like Nicolas Cage, like, he was an angel. He's like, I'm an angel. Apparently his new movie about a pig is supposed to be really good. I kind of wonder, like, is it John Wick with a pig? The movie I really enjoyed. Um... Uh, Nobody with uh, Bob Odenkirk, which was also like, I think it's from the same people who made John Wick. 
Just call me Goblin of the Morning. <laughs> that seems to have made it worse. When I'm lying in my bed, thoughts running through my head, and I think that love is dead, I'm loving goblins instead. <laughs> See how dumb it sounds? Nice hat. Are you trying to look like a secret agent? See, nobody cares. I mean, it's actually kind of lame. Like the compression, the compression that connects the membrane to the screen is controlled entirely by these tabs. Like, see how the middle has some rows missing? So if I take this tab and I rotate it, that creates compression against the screen. And now it's fixed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Again, like on the TI, the screen is like its own separate module. This one's being uh, directly driven by the main CPU. Oh, by the way, I've got some spotted cow tonight. Maybe this is, issue isn't with the membrane. Maybe it's with um, what's actually connecting to the screen. I'm sorry, connecting to the chip. Uh, let's see where we got. Um, do, 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 do. This is just adhesive. Oh, those are both the same. I'm guessing those are. Um, actually, it's probably a LCD driver. Probably was in built in RAM. Uh, yeah. Here's something else. If I bend those tabs too many times, they're gonna break. Oh, what about that one song? How do you talk to a goblin? How do you hold it close to where you are? Do, 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 do. How do you talk to a goblin? It's like trying to get your falling star. All right, looks like the offending pins are here and then they connect right here. Now, obviously I'm not gonna be able to fix where they bond to the chip, but I might be able to fix that. Maybe? <laughs> uh, that is so weird. Oh, HP. You move in mysterious ways. How much flux are you gonna use, Ben? Well, the bigger the blob, the better the job. I'm using <clears throat> I'm using the camera like a mirror. I'm holding the screen up to the lens so I can look at the viewfinder and see if I can change anything on the screen. I'm looking for those missing columns. Yeah, bud, I know you're you're like, please play with me, I'm a kitten, meow, meow. Okay, that's vertical. All right, I looked it up. I looked it up. These are actually the LCD controller chips. There's two of them, one half per screen. So I removed one and the screen's a little bit warm, uh, but that's okay, it'll cool off. I could probably stick it in the fridge. I gotta get another beer anyway. Oh uh, yeah, a couple minutes in the freezer, fixed it right up. Oh, see how, see how touching it with my finger? Look at that, isn't that cool? Oh, look, see how they're staggered left and right, see that? I'm sorry, it's bits, uh, stripe pattern? Interesting. But there's still a gap. Oh, that was too much. Can I get it all solid black? No colors anymore. I want them to turn black. <laughs> okay, I'm coming back after about a month of working on this project. I put the chip back in place, made sure everything was soldered correctly, and we're right back where we started. So I'm thinking the problem has to be with the, oh, I looked up the name for it, the elastomeric, was it elasto? Elasto, elastomeric connector. That's the rubber connector between the uh, PCB and the screen. That's gotta be why those segments are missing. Oh, no matter what I try, I can't get those three columns to work. Maybe it's something in the glass itself. You know, I mean, I've tried pretty much everything else. Yeah, see like right there. I think I'm just gonna have to call it on that HP calculator. I cannot for the life of me get those three columns to work. And it was a right to repair nightmare taking that thing apart. I mean, yeah, that seems like something more like from the modern day than what, 31 years ago? Oh my gosh, 1990 was 31 years ago. 
Here's something else from 1990, the venerable TI-81, their first graphing calculator, which came before the TI-80. I guess TI was using the Microsoft School of Numbering. What is it? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 95, 98, 2000, XP, Vista, 7, 8, 10, 11. What they say, what people on the internet say is they couldn't do Windows 9 because there's so much old software that looks for like Windows 9X being Windows 9, D5 or 98 and it would have caused an issue. It was probably some other dumb reason like, no, oh no, this number is considered cursed in some cultures or... When they name products, they actually they totally take that into account. <laughs> All right, so a couple screws. Looks like it mostly tabs open. Eh. I don't, you know, I don't know if I've have I taken this apart before. I th thought I took all these apart on videos. I can't remember. Time is so nebulous these days. You know, I don't know if I ever took this one apart. Well, we got some. This is battery acid, you slime! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh man, we, <laughs> we, uh, my sister and I, we taped that off ABC <laughs> back. I, th I think that came out in 1990 as well. When did the TV miniseries It come out? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, Stephen King's It was initially released on November 18th, 1990. I was right! Do you have a question? Yes, Jonathan Frakes was in it. He was one of the characters, as was uh, the uh, judge from Night Court. All right, well, what was that? Three screws, and then you just pry it open with a screwdriver? Not too bad. Uh, for 1990, having tabs on a case was actually kind of uncommon. So that is a bit of a janky future thing. If it was Sonic CD, it'd be like, Future. All right. Well, look at this. The PC, uh, the LCD is his own subboard. Obviously, this is a more primitive model where it's got these huge amounts of ribbon cable folded over backwards, kind of like the Casio. What was that? What are those old Casios? Casio 7000 series. Now you do see some of these janky tabs. See those janky metal tabs. So that is similar to the HP. However, I don't think. I mean, at least this is separating, you know, like the main logic board. What is holding this in place? Faith? Gotta have faith, faith, faith. Oh, there's little plastic tabs. So, yeah, actually, compared to, like, remember, this was the first HP graphing calculator. Yeah, so compared to the later models, this one is a little... Because this wasn't necessarily the cost-reduced one. This was just the first, well, the first one. Yeah, so this is a much larger LCD sub-assembly than any of the subsequent... That is a Pepsi. Pepsis and beers sound completely different. Beer has more of a throaty... When you open it, where soda is more like... Even though they're both... <clears throat> carbonated. Well, of course, carb one's... One's manually carbonated, and the other one is... Carbonated from the yeast. So... Even if this were to fail, so you've still got, well, you've still got the same compression contacts here, but you've got the ribbon cable going to the glass, which is also kind of janky. However, it's its own thing, right? Now this is adhesive glued in place, and the adhesive glue, let's be honest, isn't the best way to do it, and I've had that fail on other calculators, but even if this screen completely failed, you could just get this module and then you could just resolder a ribbon cable manually. You just remove the glue and then tin it with solder. I actually haven't worked down here in my secret lab in a couple of weeks because I took some time off. Oh, look at that. They've, uh, can you see that? They've got a little insulator disc under the screw. See that? So the screw doesn't contact with the copper even though there's a uh, silk screen or sorry solder mask in front of it so this one has a copyright date on it so that's going to be the program rom ram you can tell because it's got a dash number which is always 
what RAM has indicates the speed and this is going to be your system on a chip based off the Z80. You know what I really want to take apart is I can't find them though and a friend of mine has one but it's at his work is a TI-84 plus CE Python which is the, their latest calculator. Apparently Adafruit made Python for it but according to the internet the implication of implications the implications of the Python the implementation of the Python uh, was done with a coprocessor using an Atmel uh, SAM D21 one of those which kind of triggers me because that's the same chip we're using on our new pinball controller and I'm like is TI the one buying up all these chips in these unprecedented times and we've we've done okay so far I've been buying them in bulk but uh, yeah, well anyway, so apparently that new calculator, it has an EZ80 Acclaim, which is a modern version of the Z80. It's basically a microcontroller, but it has a Z80 core, so I think they do that so they can run their ancient code still. Because the new chip still is a Z80, just a very, very advanced one. But anyway, for the Python stuff, I guess apparently it runs on a separate processor, which pipes all the data to and fro with the spy bus, which makes it very slow. And if it's a SAM D21, that's... 16 or 32K RAM, program space is 128 or 256. So if you look, if you go on like Adafruit and you look at like one of their uh, circuit Python boards, it's almost always based off the uh, D51, which is, uh, it's, that's a Cortex M4 instead of an M0. It's got way more RAM and program space. So yeah, not only is TI using up those chips, but it's probably a pretty poor version of Python. Well, again, this is an improvement. We have silicon contact domes with carbonized bottoms. You know, this is the normal way every other circuit was. That HP calculator, I have never seen a handheld unit from the 80s that used a silk screen uh, keyboard array. I mean, that's how they make keyboards now, right? I mean, this is how everything would have been back in the day. This is super common. And yeah, you got these nice rubber buttons and it's just nice. It said this was super easy to take apart, super easy to put back together, completely non-destructive as long as you're not too rough with the tabs. And how much would this have cost back then? $115? Oh yeah, so easy to put back together. So hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe HP was just like, you know what? I'm sure HP would have liked to crack at TI's lucrative monopoly. Lucrative monopoly, that's kind of redundant, on TI's lucrative monopoly of the educational calculator uh, market, but hey, you know what? Even though these calculators are way overpriced, these I mean, at least I was able to take it apart and potentially fix it. So yeah, I guess that's uh, kind of the end of the video. I was hoping to fix that calculator, because I mean, it's an amazing calculator, the HP, I mean, but I, it's his repairability on it was awful. I guess my point was, you know, when it, when it switched from being a repair video to a right to repair example video, <sighs> making non-serviceable devices isn't necessarily a new phenomenon. I just wanted to show you an example from 30 years in the past. But I mean, that same thing, but much like a Tesla or a John Deere tractor or um, an, an Apple product nowadays, that, that HP was a very high end expensive calculator and yet it was <laughs> infinitesimally harder to service than one of these relatively cheap calculators. So, you know, it's something important to think about, like being able to fix stuff. And especially, you know, I think I told this to Lewis as well, but if you want to fight for it, the way you got to go is you got to push the green. Because all these companies are trying to be green. Green, 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 green. So there's nothing green about wasting materials. So I think that's where you hit them. Right to repair is green. Just throw away one little part instead of the whole thing. Hey, uh, this other package arrived today. I thought I'd just take a quick look at it. Hey, Ben, this is my old Microsoft band that may be interesting to do a teardown on and see if it's possible to do any hacks with it. Microsoft has just continued the product itself. Microsoft just continued the product, I can't believe it. And no longer offers the app needed to set it up, so it may be functionally useless. At the very least, hopefully we can salvage some parts. J. P.S. Say hi to Bud. Oh, oh, it's one of these things. I think you use these if you do, what's it called? Exercise? I don't know, some 
You know, I've got something else to say about right to repair. Well, it's somewhat indirectly or tangentially related. Um, so they're like, hey, let's let's fill these cars with integrated circuits because they're cheap. And also, then we can tie intellectual property, aka code, to certain components and make it harder for people to fix stuff, which is another thing I mentioned on that Lewis Rossman talk. Like you're like, oh, well, you know, you could you could buy this, you know, this uh, motor that lowers and raises the window of your Tesla, but you know, where are you going to get the code, the proprietary code? So. If you were to get that code and put it onto a microcontroller, you know, if they wanted to be real dicks about it, they could say, oh, you have stolen our code, or you're using our code without permission, or you've decompiled it, or you've cross-compiled it, or you've reverse engineered it, and that makes it, you know, they could make it difficult for a, a third party to repair it. Why are there screws there? Oh, does it store the battery in the band? That would be smart. I've always wondered why phones don't do that. Or, not phones, watches. It does! Oh, that's pretty smart. That uh, watch project that I was working on, which I need to finish. Well, I gotta get caught up, I'm way behind. Got two weeks off, got way behind on pay projects. But anyway, my watch project, I was planning to do the same thing, like put the LiPo in the band uh, so the watch could be thinner. So I think that kind of sucks with most smart watches. The thing, that, the thing that adds the most thickness is usually the battery and then to some extent, often the uh, vibrator or the rumble motor. Oh, anyway, back to the car thing. So it's like, oh yes, yeah, so let's let's just fill the car with microcontrollers. Every tire has an air pressure sensor on it and a wireless transmitter, and we'd also probably have a microcontroller of some kind. And that's like that's required by the government now, thanks to all those whatever Ford it was that rolled over. And now, look at today, unprecedented times, and what's the thing that you can't get enough of? Satisfaction? No. Microcontrollers. Oh, well, yeah, speak of the devil, there's the rumble motor right there in the band. Microsoft, you're speaking my language. I think Microsoft does interesting things with hardware. I actually have a first model Surface Book. It was really glitchy when I first got it, but... After a few updates, it's pretty solid. Oh, I see what they did. Oh, there's a flex. Okay, there's gonna be a flex PCB going along the whole thing. Yeah, the battery's got a little, a little, little punchiness to it, but I think it should be okay. Doesn't say, I'm guessing that's probably about 100 milliamp hours. Might be like 150. Oh, 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 I see. Okay, I see what they did there. So they were actually making it easy to remove the battery. That's why there were screws there. So if the battery is the first thing to die, which I guess it would be, you could replace it and not have to rip everything up. But as for the watch itself, I don't see any visible screw. So I think we're going to have to go all right to repair on it. Oh, see how they've put this into one connector, the rumble motor and the battery. And if we're victims of the night, which means if they had sex, I won't be blinded by the light. That was screwed together. Just call me Goblin of the Morning, Goblin. Just touch my wart before you leave me, baby. Yeah, it looks like this was encased in, uh, I don't know, whatever this material is. What was that console? Was it that Giz? No, what's the one where that guy wrecked his car? Was that Gizmodo? Giz no, Gizmodo's a website. Gizmondo. And it's got that certain kind of covering that apparently degrades. So this kind of reminds me of. Oh, it's actually not very thick. Oh, it's it's like it's like Red Dead Redemption. It's like, oh, I'm gonna gut a deer. Arr, it's a perch. Yeah. Well, I hooked it up to the wall charger. Got this weird I guess that means it's transmitting data. Well, it can't really transmit data to a wall charger wart. It feels like the whole thing is like potted with this black goop. Oh, I put in a brand new knife blade. Now I just keep thinking I'm gonna slash myself again. They wouldn't, no, they wouldn't have done this whole thing with flax. That'd be ridiculous, right? 
Yeah, it definitely seems like they built this thing and then they like dipped it in this goo. Oh, yeah, remember what it reminds me of is that stuff where you like buy it and then you dip your tool handles in it, and then it like puts like yellow on your tool handles. What's that called? Plast oh, Plasti Dip, yeah. That's kind of what it reminds me of. The new Microsoft Band. It's sweat proof and repair proof. It's like it's covered with skin. Oh, there's some of its internal structure. Which reminds me of that toy they had in the 90s where it was like Battle Damage Terminator. It was like you buy like this endoskeleton toy and then you put it in this chamber and then you would inject like this this skin around it. So you could, you know, give the Terminator skin and then you could rip the skin off for battle damage. And then they had like these, you know, 10 year old boys playing with it, you know, for the R rated movie product. <laughs> ah, the 90s. <laughs> Do you remember the 90s? Number four, Millie Vanilli. Jay, what do I remember the most about the 90s? What do I, oh, a better question. What do I miss about the 90s? Fast food was a lot cheaper, even considering inflation. Like when I was in high school, you go to McDonald's and get like the meal or whatever. God, I want to say it was like $3? $3 or maybe 4 And also the burgers were juicy, especially if you got the Arch Deluxe. I used to love the Arch Deluxe. I thought it was so good. I was so sad when they discontinued it. I found a YouTube channel where they kind of tried to recreate it. Because I thought about recreating it and I'm like, oh, surely someone has done this already. And then, of course, they had. Let's see, Arch Deluxe. But what was it? Yeah, like you'd make like, what was it? 425 was the minimum wage when I was a teenager. And then you'd get a meal for like three, I wanna say it was $3. What is it now? You basically can't get out of McDonald's for like, what, eight something? And well, well yeah, federal minimum wage is still like really low, but of course, again, <laughs> good luck finding anyone for 725. I heard like up uh, when I was on my fishing trip, up north of here, well, near where the fishing trip was, Spooner, Spooner, Wisconsin, which is up by Eau Claire. Uh, apparently, the, they were starting people at $17 at the McDonald's. So, if you think about it, if you compare it to like when I was a kid, like go to McDonald's, I'd make like probably like $4.25 an hour, $5 an hour, and I could buy one meal per hour. Now, with what they're having, having to pay people, you could buy two meals per hour. I know that's not an apples for oranges comparison, but. How did I get on that tangent? Oh, I was talking about the, the 90s. What else was cool in the 90s? Well, first of all, do I even have any viewers who are young enough to not remember the 90s? I know YouTube wants me to pretend that no one under 13 watches this video. Just like we're supposed to pretend no one under 13 plays, you know, Grand Theft Auto. I, was, I, want, I don't want to say gas is cheaper because actually, until like, well, you know, with everything going on, Okay, let's say 2019. Like 2019 gas was actually all time low cost, even when you take into account inflation. So you're like, oh, when I was a kid, we bought gas for 25 cents a gallon. When yeah, but if you take inflation into account, uh, 210 in 2019 was actually cheaper than that. Uh, I'm trying to think, what else? Uh, Hooting the Blowfish? Of course, I never really liked them. So all you've got to say about the 90s is that <laughs> Fast food was cheaper. Well, there's a lot of things that were cheaper, even compared to inflation, like cigarettes were cheaper. This thing appears to be enclosed in metal. It looks like there's like a right angle here with the flex connector, and then you've got this, so I'm guessing this probably pops off that way. Alanis Morissette was on the radio all the time. Swallow it down with a jagged little pill. Alanis Morissette, who single-handedly destroyed the word irony. Very few things in that song, very few of her examples were ironic. Most of them were just unfortunate. It's like, no smoking sign on your cigarette break. Like, so what? Now, if you worked at Philip Morris, and then you're like, oh, my first day at Philip Morris. Time for one of my 16 smoke breaks. And then you walk outside and Philip Morris doesn't let you smoke. That would be ironic, don't you think? Oh, wow, so they've got, oh, that was soldered to the flex and I just broke it, okay. Well, we're closer than we were. Oh, this, oh, the flex is glued to the back of this box. 
Oh my gosh. Well, this was this definitely takes us around the horn as far as repairability, doesn't it? Uh oh, was I on things that sucked in the 90s? What was that group? Who was that guy? Matchbox 20! Oh, I freaking hated Matchbox 20. Now, run Rob Thomas one on his own. I thought he did pretty good, but Matchbox 20 was terrible. The music was like, I want to push you around. Well, I will. Well, I will. It's like, wow, what a great song. That's that's so melodic and brilliant. So apparently everything I'm complaining about is, is the music. Then Bill Clinton had a cat, I think. What else happened in the 90s? Oh, O.J. Simpson, that whole thing. You know, I I didn't follow that at all because I I didn't watch TV for um, oh yeah see that's glued. I actually didn't watch TV for probably about ten years of my life. Like basically after I graduated high school until I until I was about thirty, I just didn't watch TV. So I didn't watch Seinfeld. I didn't watch X Files. I didn't watch the OJ trial. Didn't watch Simpsons past like first four seasons. I missed all of it. Or uh, Friends. Sorry, Microsoft Band. You'll never jump again. No! <laughs> the Microsoft Band has died. Inform its next of kin. <laughs> I'll be here all week. Try the veal. <laughs> See that right there? They did a they did a stamp pressing right there. Oh, right to repair fail. Bobby Dazzler! There's gonna be one on the other side too! <laughs> what was that thing that people liked when I did that? Dave Jones singing Aladdin songs? <laughs> Can you feel the love tonight? What a win! Oh, look what they did! This can continues on and becomes the flex part of the band. Oh, it's kind of clever and cheap at the same time. I'm going to buy a Marty King, so enemies beware. Is my printer making this table shake? Eh, who cares? Looks like a uh, Freescale. It is. That's the same thing Microsoft uses on uh, uh, their controllers, so they apparently like Freescale. Oh, look, there's that ribbon cable. The ribbon cable plugged in right there. Antenna for the Wi-Fi. Looks like it's going out in the band as well. Oh, really? I was not be prepared for that. I heard they removed that song from the new Lion King movie. Why would you do that? It's like, hmm, this movie had this much Jeremy Irons. I know, we should remake it with less Jeremy Irons. Wrong. Anyway, so you've got what I assume is a little arm chip there. Microcontroller, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and then you're gonna have flash memory and some RAM right there. Then looks like you got, well, I'm guessing those are some little IMUs. Uh, those are the things that actually track the motion and whatnot. Uh, yeah, well, it looks like the screen should just, should just pop off there. Yep, no problem. It's weird there's a secondary plug here. Is that for the touch screen? So why is everything so greasy? Is this like human grease? No. Where did this come from? Well, there you go. We had an HP 48SX top of the line calculator from back in the day. Very hard to service. A TI-81. Very easy to service. And then also, someone sent me a Microsoft Band, which is basically held together by rubber potting material from different eras. Very interesting. Oh well, at least I got some lipos out of it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video looking at different right to repair nightmares, which is the thumbnail I made because it's very clickbaity. Yeah, I'm still trying to catch up on some pay projects after I took some time off, but hopefully I'll have time to finish that watch video in the future. Actually, I ordered some PCBs for it from Osh Park, so. Um, those should be coming actually pretty soon. Uh, yeah, so just stay tuned for more videos and I guess we'll see you in the next one. Man, it's really hard to sing in other accents. Maybe that's why singers, you can't really tell where they're from unless you hear them in an interview, right? 
like uh, ACDC, they, they, they don't go, you shook me all night long. What a win. Uh, Rolling Stones, but they're, they're from England, like most. Well, every musical group is either from England or Canada. Uh, brown sugar, you make me taste so good. Brown sugar, just like a young girl should. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Okay, what's the other country that every singer is from? Oh, yeah, Canada. Uh, br oh, Brian Adams. Oh, okay, that's something... I just thought of something else that I didn't like about the 90s. For a while, every wedding used that song from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Everything I do, I do it for you. Of course, he doesn't sound Canadian in that song, so... If Brian Adams had a Canadian... Well, of course he has a Canadian accent, because he's Canadian. But what, what would it sound like if he sang with a Canadian accent? I got my first real six string. Yeah, you know, I bought it at the five and dime. Oh, yeah, then I played it till my fingers. They were bleeding. It was the summer of, oh, I think back in 69. <laughs> Maybe it's time to end the video.